three, two, one, go. All right, let's go. Right off the bat, um, something is gonna come up. So, hope you're all prepared. I hope I don't miss it now. There we go. Um, jump the wall. Basically, <laughs> skipping half the lap. Um, I th I'll try and go into details with that as I'm driving now, but essentially, using the rocket start I get at the start of like the finish line, I do like a kind of precise jump on Donkey Kong, and because of his weight compared to Yoshi, I end up being able to just completely bounce on him and skip over the wall. And in this version, the US version of the game, there is no hit detection on that wall. Um, so I just go like below the tunnel that I'm about to enter now, and it tricks the game into believing that I fell from this tunnel instead of from the finish line. So in turn, skipping about half a lap. And you see I got this blue shell right now, spiny shell. Um, it's always in that balloon I picked it up from. And by shooting this and aiming myself to the wall, I jump over the finish line and at the same time drop down into this tunnel. Because I'm in first place, the spiny shoots for me. Um, so that's pretty neat little feature in the game that helps with the skips just a little bit. And that's Luigi Raceway. <laughs> But yeah, um, I'll go into details about a bunch of mechanics of the game now, because these next two levels, Moo Moo Farm and Koopa Troopa Beach, don't really have uh, any like skip glitches, so to speak. So yeah, um, one mechanic that probably I first of all should talk about is the driver itself. Oh, I missed the rocket start. Anyways, um, it's not that precise, but whatever. I'm playing as Yoshi in this run. As you might be able to tell, um, for a few reasons. The main reason, I guess, is his speed. His speed is the same as Peach and Toad, but those three characters, the lightweights in this game, have a lot more speed and acceleration and everything compared, like, they're period better drivers in this game compared to all the others. But Yoshi has. Um, the middle weight, I believe, of the three drivers. I think Peach is the heaviest of those three. I might be wrong, it might be Yoshi that is heavier than Peach, but... It's, I'm, I'm sure it's that way, though. But um, Yoshi has a very good weight for this run. What that means is it gives a good like kind of bulk to hit the heavy characters to jump over walls like I did at the start of the run. You can do it with uh, Toad the same, but another good reason is Yoshi is just faster to select on the menu when you select character, when you reset the console, which is after every cup. So that should go into details about the character choice. Um, 112 is pretty good by the way, even though I messed up, it's still pretty good. But yeah, um, as for items, there is a certain set percent chance of getting certain items in certain spots. So you might see me sandbag or things alike throughout the run to try and get certain items for some skips. And um, also notable about items, the CPU in this game cannot throw any sort of shell. Um, they're scripted to be able to pick them up, I believe, and they have them in their inventory, but they are not a like allowed by the game code to throw them. Um, so yeah, that's pretty neat. This right here is not considered a skip, it's um, an intended jump, so therefore it's allowed in the category um, called No Skips 2. Um, what you saw happen there, if you, like I said, if you blink you might miss something. Yeah, I said there is no skip in this level, which is true, but there is a glitch that is not considered a skip, which I just did. As you saw, I got a golden shroom, um, a golden mushroom. Oh, jump! <laughs> Still made it with that banana, nice. Um, in first place, which is not possible, but this item box I pick up here, I go to the right side of the finish line and activate the item here. As you can see I got a lightning. Um, the reason why that works is, for some re sort of reason, there's a misalignment at the finish line. So before crossing the finish line, you also go to the start part of the lab. So it thinks that you're technically in 8th frame, 8th uh, eighth eighth place for like a frame. Oh, Wario blocked me, damn. It's not a huge loss, it's like 7 seconds. And 
Well, it depends on, like, you have infinite frames to get it if you just stand still. But obviously, I think it's like a one or two frame, depending on how well you do it. Um, when you cross by like I did. So, I got a golden shroom, which is pretty good. But, um, star is the best speed item in the game. And then I got hit by Wario, which is annoying, but... Um, there's a lot more time to be lost on other things in the run than that, so 7 seconds does not actually matter too much in the big picture, so it's okay. Turn down my heater. Uh, this stage has some RNG. This is one of the big two RNG levels, but if I'm not too unlucky, this shouldn't take too long. I pick up that item box and drive around and hope for a star, there we go. <laughs> so, if I don't get a star there, there's not much else to do than try to get a star again and continue that until the CPUs are so far ahead of you that you might as well drive and pick up. Because um, this is actually an intended skip done in an unintended way. As you see, I just skipped a lap, <laughs> which if you've never seen that, you're probably mindfucked as hell. But how that works is essentially um, you're supposed to, on the left side, railroad thing um, of me right now with the train going around, you're supposed to drive through that tunnel with a star active. But it turns out that you can actually just drive in from the other end of the tunnel, activate the star and drive out again. And that yields the exact same result as if you did the skip the intended way. So that's not allowed to do, because it, it's an unintended way to do the skip um, in the no skips run, but it's obviously allowed in this run. Also, I got a 5% chance item with that 5% chance item. The, the boo is a 5% chance and the red is a 5% chance. And this opens up for a skip that you don't always get to see, just because you need specific your red shell. By driving slowly into that red shell, I can bounce over the wall after it gets stuck there. Because the red shell doesn't break um, when it hits a wall after a set amount of time when it tries to track down a CPU. But because I'm in first place, it is unable to track down any CPUs, so it just tries to go back on the track. And because it, it can't go back on the track because it's stuck behind a wall, it just stays there and I can bounce over that wall and save a little bit of time. It's pretty funny, I like that a lot. Okay, this is kind of difficult, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, again, <laughs> let me try and explain. By jumping into the wall initially, what you saw me do, uh, and get stuck there, it places you down on the, the level again with Lucky 2, which, while Lucky 2 is on screen, for some sort of reason, the out of bounds is unable to catch you. So when I jump out of bounds again, for X amount of frames, it's like two seconds or so, I'm able to clip through and Lucky2 is unable to pick me up because he's still on screen. So I just go down on the track below. And incidentally, it also triggers another glitch, which is a wrong warp. Not the kind of wrong warp you'd probably know from Ocarina of Time, but just the flag it puts you on for like Lucky 2, like where he has to put you back down on the track, gets screwed up. So you can see here, when I jump in the wall, I immediately, if I can jump the wall, come on, this is, yeah, I immediately go half a lap over and land down here again. I guess it's, I'm not exactly sure why, but it's something to do with when you like cross over the map below as Lucky 2, like comes back on like off screen so he's able to pick you up again or something like that. It screws with the game a lot. This is one of the reasons US version is a good version of the game along with the one on Luigi Raceway you saw at the run of, uh, at the start of the run. Yeah. The cars here can be a little bit tricky to get around. So a pretty good start to this run so far. Um I I like to say anyways this is going pretty well actually. Um yeah. Next track, Frappa Snowland. This is a track that everyone can follow along with at home if they feel like it, if you have your game open and playing along for whatever reason. It's very, very easy. All you have to do is drive back at the start. You don't need to do it on this lap, you can do it on any lap. Go on this wooden bridge and then jump off to the side here without touching the road on the left. And then drive over here past the finish line. And it triggers the finish line, but Lucky2 thinks he needs to put you down on the bridge again because you didn't touch the road before you went out of bounds. So 
Essentially, I'm just skipping laps over and over here, and that's all Frappa Snowland is in the skips category. It's actually kind of sad, because it is a fun level, but, I mean, that's that level done. Very easy. Oh, and on the menu transitioning, I'm holding in start and mashing A and B, because holding in a button for some reason scrolls the text, or um, I guess rather the the values, the scores on the scoreboard quicker, and then the mashing is just for advancing the screens. Okay, this level has a frame perfect jump. I'm attempting three times in a row, and on top of being frame perfect, it can be impossible sometimes. It depends on what kind of speed you approach this wall with, and it's coming up right now. Okay, I got it once, that's nice. Just getting it once is actually impressive. Uh, 3 out of 3 is ridiculously hard. You can obviously do it, but even though it's a frame-perfect trick, like I said, if you just have, happen to have a very weird kind of speed, one frame you'll be in front of the possible frame, and because of your speed, the next frame you'll be so close to the wall that when you jump on it, it will not be able to do the glitch. But like you see there, that might have worked with a different speed, because it felt good. But this is the backup, you can jump on that wall right there. That's more like a two-frame jump, it's a way more lenient wall. The walls are differently made in this game all around, and they're kind of strange. As you can see, you can just jump into them and bounce. If you ever... S um, I'm not sure exactly where to find it, but maybe it's possible to find on YouTube somewhere. But I advise people to find like a locked camera of like a skip being done because seeing the driver just flying through the air like this they just hit the wall and just go into the air immediately it looks really weird and this was a really good show commands and this run is actually pretty good right now it's not um wall record pace or anything like that i'd say because i've definitely had some big troubles so far but it's gone pretty well thus far these are some of the scarier levels toads turnpike and show commands I guess Mario Raceway, this one coming up here, is also kind of scary, because if you don't get good RNG, you can actually lose quite a bit of time, because you need mushrooms to do a big skip in this one. So I'm gonna try and sandbag at the start here. Activate this in around 5th place. I didn't get anything good. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get second items, okay. So, um, you can jump over the wall to the right there, in two spots. You can either jump to the left or the right of that wall, and if you jump to the right, you skip all the way over let me show you, here to the right by the Luigi's sign over on the side. That is a lot of, <laughs> a lot of driving you skip immediately, but I need a mushroom. I might YOLO something if I don't get any mushrooms at all, but we'll see about that. I have another lab. Mushrooms is a 10% chance item, a single mushroom in first place, and you're unable to get triple shrooms, etc. in first place. But in fifth place, the chance of getting three mushrooms, wow, <laughs> bad RNG becomes 25% chance in 5th in place, so essentially... Whoa! Nice blocking the green shell with the banana. Essentially, it, it um, becomes a lot easier to get from the item boxes, so it's a higher chance. Okay, I'll try and YOLO this. This is stupid, but whatever. Damn. You can jump that wall without needing um, a mushroom, but it's very precise, and I just did it for fun, because... It would be really cool if I got to show it off at the marathon like that without a mushroom. But yeah, that's this stage. I guess I didn't explain why I reset the console, by the way. After every cup, we reset the console in this um, speedrun. Simply because the um, trophy ceremony at the end takes forever, and there's no real reason to watch it. Obviously, it there is a reason to watch it, but for a speedrun it, it just adds cutscene time that is unnecessary. So it's just been cut off for that reason. Um, this level is pretty infamous, I guess. You can jump this wall here. That skips half a lap, and then you can jump this wall here. And that, if I can do it, skips another half a lap, and you're done. Um, this is a frame-perfect jump again. Again, works the same as the Shoko Mountain wall. So if you approach it with a certain high amount of speed, um, it will be impossible to do the jump, but if I just do this sort of well, it, like you can see 9 second laps and stuff like that. It's a really short level if you do it this well. Damn, that was really good, actually. I only lost just about um, 6 to 8 seconds over a really, really, really good one.
This stage also, this track rather, has no skips in it. So this is just driving. Um, kind of boring. And the same for Bowser's Castle later on, but in between we have Royal Raceway. So that one will have a actually two skips, and I will go for one of them once only, because it doesn't save much time. So you can see that in due time. But this is, um, I kind of dislike this level, but it's still fun to drive, I have to admit. It has a lot of tight corner cuts and stuff in the gameplay. Also, for those wondering why I don't just use the boo and try and get a star or something right now, it's because the boo doesn't work like that in Grand Prix. In races it does, when you're racing against friends and stuff, but if you're playing Grand Prix against bots like I am right now, the way this boo functions functions is just like a normal item box, which means using a boo just works like an item box, and also obviously gives you the invisibility and vulnerability thing. Um, but besides that, there's no benefit. So I'm just holding on to it for now to try and dodge one of these penguins. I obviously just had one, but I tr I thought I would get around it without needing to use it like that. You can jump over this gap. It looks cool. It's a little bit faster, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. It's kind of risky if you do it way too short, but I practiced it enough to not <laughs> mess up very hard on that. Little penguins. Alright, that should file the end of this track. I'll drive off the edge over here just for fun. When you finish, you can just make the CPU drive into the, the ice and it still gives the lucky two animation. <laughs> Oh, and I can see people are talking about FPS. If you're wondering what kind of FPS this runs at, it's 30th FPS. So it's a 30th of a second for frame perfect inputs in this. It's not super impressive, but it's still at the point where it, it can be really difficult to do consistently. This is not the longest run you will have of a speedrun, it's about half an hour long. The world record, I believe, right now still is 27 minutes and 17 seconds by Apni317. Oh, um, and I just did a skip there. By hitting that part of the wall, it thinks that you fell from this bridge is apparently what happened. So it thought uh, it, it, the thought process of the game is just to put you back on track as if you just fell from up there. So it just places your flag on top of the bridge and just skips, I guess, like half a lap or so. It's a nice little amount of time. And um, since I was explaining... Oh, this is annoying. Um, the CPUs can't throw lightnings. Oh, don't fall down! Got a mash jump. No! <laughs> God damn it, dude. Uh, since I'm small, I don't have the same amount of speed, so my jumps just don't do the same kind of work as if I had been a big cart. But yeah, the bots can't throw lightnings, but they're a 1% chance to even pick them up. They're very, very low chance. Okay, and it's only the last place that can do it. Okay, jumping off the side here, and by hitting this wall I'm about to hit, you can see there, it like, scooped me forward. Again, sort of the same thing, it thinks you fell off from here, and it just put you back on track. I waited with the mushroom there because the wall is finicky. But yeah, that's kind of the only two there are in this stage. The one I just did before, that jumping off the ramp to the left, if you land it perfectly and only bounce once before you hit the water, it's very very precise and there's no real setup for it. Um, it will wrong warp you to the finish line instead for whatever reason, so that's really good for the last lap, just to finish off. But it's really rare, it's precise as hell, there's no way to do it consistently. I've had it happen obviously a few times in my time uh, running this game, but not twice in a row, ever. Oh, and I said um, Apni has the world record, which is true, he has 27.17 I believe it is still. And I have a PB of 28 minutes and 32 seconds, which, <laughs> just to brag a little, it was last year? Yeah, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, it was world record for three months. But I stopped playing this game for a long time because of SM64, so I've just been de-rusting and stuff for this. I don't really run this actively anymore. Which is also why I've been a little bit scared about some of these tricks that have actually ended up going really well, just because my muscle memory isn't the same as it used to be, if you understand what I mean by that. But yeah, um, the stage has no 
skips, no, human skips rather, if you watched any tasks of this game. There's actually a lot of skips possible that you will just, it, it's impossible to do in RTA. Uh, but something that is worth mentioning for this stage that I didn't get a chance to mention in Kalimari Desert, and that will also be applicable to Yoshi Valley if I like, end up in a situation where I eat them, and in DKJP if I end up needing them. Uh, this banana and fake item boxes zooms you out as you can tell, which usually you'd think N64 game, zooming out, that's not a good idea because you're just gonna get more lag. Oh wow, that banana spun me out immediately. Anyways, um, before I get to that point, um, in this game it works different. For whatever reason, the more you zoom out, the less lag you get. And this level along with the other three I mentioned are just really laggy due to certain factors. So zooming out with that item is called super zoom out because I'm already zoomed out as you can see. Um, and keeping that item behind you just zooms you out even further. It reduces lag by just a, a little bit extra. Which is neat. Um, but yeah, the banana thing, it doesn't always spin you out immediately, and you can just cancel it by releasing the A button or tapping the B button real quick. Just releasing speed, essentially, which is a nice little mechanic to just make bananas not as scary as you might think they are. Damn, <laughs> I just cut through that green shell. The green shell, hit shell hitboxes are not the greatest, I guess you could say. They don't work <laughs> as intended sometimes, and you can cut through them. So that's the end of... Star Cup, and now it's time for Special Cup. So, done with and the 12 out of 16. Yeah. Wanna go for donations, you can. Cool. Yeah, well, uh, SKU donated $20. No message. No message. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Anything else? Not as far as I can see. Okay, so, I'll just keep going with some commentary. This level is very laggy, as you can tell but it doesn't really matter much in the skips because you just drive into this tunnel and I try to line myself up on this white spot and by doing this a little bit precise... Uh, I messed it up, damn. No worries, I have all the time in the world, so to speak, to get this because it saves so much time that there's no other thing to go for. Alright, clipped out of bounds, there's no hit detection on that part of the wall and um, by just barely strike... like touching the finish line beneath it, as you can see I'm jumping off the finish line, and then either clipping back in bounce, or if you miss the clipping back in bounce, this works the same and puts you back in the cave. So I, I go past the lap that it thinks I'm on, and then I also clip back in later in the track, so it doesn't like check for me going back on the lap at all, so I am able to just do this three times and that's the end of the stage. So I messed up a little bit, but this can be a really really quick track if done perfect. But I went okay still, so yeah. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm not on world record pace at all anymore. This might be a 29 minute time if I keep this up by the way, so it's actually a pretty good run. I don't think anyone has ever had a sub 30 in a marathon before. I've done this a few marathon runs so far and I've always had either 30xx or 31xx or something like that, so we'll see if I can do it. but. This is the second big RNG stage. You might have remember if you watched, I mentioned in Kalimari Desert. The reason is I need something to boost me. And I didn't get it. Mm, if I get lucky, I can still. Okay. I lost 30 seconds <laughs> just now. It might not look like it, but I did. Because it might make more sense when I get there, but I'll explain it. There's a skip where I need a speed item to be able to jump the wall. You can jump on the wall. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is scary jump over here. All right, But it's really really precise and especially for a marathon it's not very friendly. But um, if I have good RNG, which is a 25% chance in the spot I activated the item box, I get triple shrooms. So I can just do this three times, but now I can only do it once out of three instead. So I stand on this little spot on the ground, that's the visual cue, line up with that wall and then drive and jump. And hitting this black spot, for whatever reason, um, triggers the game into thinking you went on the other side of the map and then back, or something like that, and I just straight up skip a lap. I, I'm not, I don't know perfectly well why it happens, but the theory is that anyways, it like switches the flagging in the game back and forth on the level and then just thinks that you fell off at the finish line while you already are supposed to be on the next lap, or something like that. 
and it saves a lot of time on that specific lap, but sadly I didn't get the triple shroom, so could have saved quite a bit more time, but it's still okay. For a marathon run, I don't expect to get the triple shrooms. Driving off the side here, because it's a little bit faster than going to the finish line up ahead. Alright, Banshee Boardwork, um, the last level besides Rainbow Road, so the second final level, it has no skips in it, um, but maybe I can set up for a skip, we'll see about that, because I can maybe use the CPUs for a, a giant skip, but that does require um, certain CPU RNG. I think the CPU spots look good for that, because the way the game chooses your rival on each cup is basically it randomizes on a few factors, someone who is your rival and someone who's your second rival. What that means is, for instance, as you can see, the placements right now is DK in second and Wario in third, or now it's switched, but yeah. So maybe Wario is my main rival, meaning that he is the most likely to take first place if I don't get it, or second place if I do get it. And then DK is right after that, meaning that they drive just a little bit better than the rest of the bots. And I guess they just did it so that it's more balanced out between the bots. Instead of like the scores from each race being completely randomized, meaning you might be able to win a an entire cup with like not very many points at all, like 15 or something, and that would have been a bad mechanic in the game. Um, falling off, yeah, that banana was perfectly, perfectly placed by the butts to destroy me. Um, the banana placement and like fake item boxes and stuff are always sort of in set patterns on this track. So I've seen that specific banana be in that specific spot many times before, but there isn't much to do about it if you don't react really, really quickly, because it's it's on a hill, and the hill stops right after, meaning that you don't get the normal time you have to cancel out the banana spin-out animation, so I just got screwed, essentially. But at least this does mean I get better RNG oh, from items, item boxes on average. Wow, I'm getting wrecked by CPUs right now. Not terrible, but not really good either. But yeah, like I said at the start of the run, stars are the best speed item. They increase your speed by 1.5 times of your regular speed. Oh, I could have actually set up for a skip, I think, but I forgot about it for a second because I was busy <laughs> trying to like not choke too much on Banshee Ball work. We have a $50 donation from Tompa. Oh, are, yo Tompa. We are Save the Frames Foundation and are very happy that the frames <laughs> that have been saved during this marathon. Here's our way to say, say thank you, your fellow blanket, Tompa. Blanket guy. Thank you, Tompa. <laughs> yeah, he's really nice. And your, and your blanket. Also, um, for those who watched, it's, well, I had no chance to really explain that, but it's kind of obvious. Jumping off the side at the start, you're able to skip past uh, the first loop of the track, and I'm not sure exactly how much time it saves, but probably around 20 seconds of the track, and it's a pretty long track, so that is a decent amount of time. And everyone probably remembers Rainbow Road for being a super lengthy track that takes forever to get through. However, if I don't screw up too much on this, I might be able to do this really, really quickly. Um, not just because of the jump I did at the start, which I'm pretty sure many have seen before, but if you've never watched a speedrun of this before, I'm very sure you've never seen this skip I'm about to do in just a second. Oh, double greens. This is perfect RNG, too. They're really not rare, the 35% chance in first place, but you need them for this. Okay, line up here and shoot the green shell on the wall. Okay, that's good. By bouncing into the green shell, I jump over the wall, and this works the same as um, Frappa Snowland, sort of, where I cross the finish line, but it places me back down here um, behind the finish line because it thinks I fell from here. But when Lakitu puts you down, I never really explained that too well, I think. He doesn't check for which lab you're on. So he doesn't reverse me a lap, he just puts me back on the track on the exact same lap that I'm currently on, so... This is gonna be the end of the run, by the way. When I finish this lap, after I get on the track, um, so be ready with time. You have to say time. Yes, I yes. will. 
And time. That was well, pretty good. 29.51. Damn, that's pretty good. I think that is the best marathon run I, I, me and anyone else has done for the skips of this game. So yeah, uh, that green shell skip used to be considered TAS for a long time, but a guy called Jonesy or DNTN31 um, sort of started to implement it but with the help of a TASer in the run and now we have a good setup for it and it's actually not that difficult. So that was a good run. Um, only a minute and 20 off my PB, which is really good considering I'm rusty as hell in this game and it's a, it's a tough category to not lose half a minute on small things immediately. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed that run anyways. And before we go to intermission, before the next run, uh, Frogert X donated $5. No message. But thank you anyways. Yes, thank you. Alright, I guess...